Today, you'll learn three very important things about American English. Number one, why the American Midwest doesn't have the neutral accent, according to linguistic researchers. Number two, why most Americans generally sound neutral. And three, you'll learn an easier way to sound neutral while still sounding completely natural. Hi, I'm Josh, your American English Guide, and if you're new here, this is English Hacks Pronunciation, where I help you to sound like a native, if you want, and to understand natural American speech better. Let's start by looking at why there isn't only one neutral-sounding American accent. So if you live in Washington state, no one ever says they have an accent. They all think they speak pretty normal. People say that us Marylanders have accents, but I don't think we have an accent. Idaho doesn't have a really distinct accent. There's no accent in Indiana. This might be very biased, but I don't think we, I really don't think we have an accent. I mean, I, I think this is normal. It's a perfect neutral Pacific Northwest tone. American English pronunciation teachers and accent reduction coaches usually teach something that's called General American English or Standard American English. This is supposed to be a very neutral sounding pronunciation based on speakers in the Midwest. But what exactly is General or Standard American? Let's see what experts have to say. Ask a group of experts to define Standard American English and you'll find there's no standard answer. Even the editors of the American Heritage Dictionary are careful to qualify their definition. They note, people who use the term standard English rarely make clear what they have in mind by it and tend to ignore the evidence that doesn't fit their idea. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not very helpful. Let's dig a little deeper. According to Wikipedia, General American English is the umbrella accent of American English spoken by a majority of Americans and widely perceived among Americans as lacking any distinctly regional, ethnic, or socioeconomic characteristics. Modern language scholars discredit the original notion of General American as a single unified accent or a standardized form of English, except perhaps as used by the media, such as TV, the news, etc. In reality, General American covers a continuum of accents rather than a single unified accent. Americans with high education, or who are from the North Midland, Western New England, and Western regions of the country are the most likely to be perceived as having general American accents. Notice that Western American English, which is what I speak, is included. Also notice that it didn't say the Midwest, it said the North Midland. That's part of the problem with the idea that the Midwest has the neutral accent. Many people from the Midwest might tell you that they don't have an accent. And although many of them do still sound neutral, which I know from personal experience because I lived in Missouri for two years, linguists say that they do have an accent. What this means is that there isn't just one standard neutral sounding accent in American English, but instead there are several neutral sounding accents, which is good news for you. And it also means that in some small ways, all of these are accents, even the Midwestern ones. There are some very small changes between the Midwest and the West, for example, and we're going to talk about some of those towards the end, but these changes are so small in the flow of normal speech that they don't really stand out as being from a particular region. And many people won't even notice, especially if they're not paying attention specifically to your pronunciation. The only things that are usually really noticeable are the use of certain words, for example, soda or pop, or the pronunciation of certain words. For example, the word sure has three pronunciations, at least. Sure, how I say it, sure, and sure. People in different places say these words differently. Let's first take a quick look at why so many people think that the Midwest is the neutral sound 
and why you are told that this is the neutral pronunciation that you should learn. Really, I think it's the media combined with teachers trying to find an accent to teach as the standard. However, you might be surprised to learn that the general American pronunciation that most pronunciation teachers and accent coaches teach you guys actually isn't spoken by many people, if any. Standard speech is spoken nowhere in America as such. It is based on RP, which is the British Received Pronunciation or Proper British, which was adopted with American alterations in the early 1900s by linguist William Tilley. This authentic American sound was loosely based on the speech of the northeastern population of the US. It was spoken by the cultured, well-educated, well-traveled people of the time. Listen to old movies to hear it. The unaccented variety that is sometimes called standard American or standard speech is one taught by accent coaches. This form is actually an idealized dialect, meaning that it's not really spoken anywhere, but instead is acquired through professional training. Actors and professional communicators, including some from the Midlands, often take classes in accent reduction to lose any regional or social sounds in their speech. This is what most pronunciation teachers and accent reduction coaches are teaching you. It still sounds neutral, but it's not the only neutral sounding accent. Let's move on to how to sound more American and more neutral in an easier way. So how is it even possible to sound neutral if there isn't one neutral way to pronounce things? The secret is that there are core general features of American English that make it sound American compared to British or Australian, for example. In addition to certain important vowel differences between American English and British English, the core features that create the American sound include flapping T and D in certain places, such as water, paddle, what if, pronouncing all R sounds, for example, R, core, ear, L velarization, which is a fancy way of describing the dark L, or what I like to call the half L vowel sound, like in the words all and feel, and T glottalization. For example, mountain, important, sentence. In addition, many or most speakers who sound neutral also use other things like the cot cot merger, which is where a ah and a ah merge into a. Ah. This is how I speak, and which has also been moving from Western American eastward across the country for several decades now and is actually part of the way that many people under the age of 40 naturally speak. The lot palm merger, where now the L is silent and this just uses the same sound, ah. Pronouncing Mary, Mary, and Mary the same instead of Mary and Mary. And pronouncing certain words like new as new. Note that these extra things like the cot cot merger are not necessary to sound American or to sound completely neutral. These are actually part of the small differences between the neutral sounding accents. As long as you master the core features of the American sound, especially the vowels, then you should sound pretty neutral. It's really your choice how you want to speak based on the sound that you like. If you like the sound of the idealized accent, then choose that. Or you can choose a different neutral sounding accent, like Western American, which is what I speak and teach. Even better, you can learn the English hacks way. This takes the neutral sound of Western American English, which is already a little bit easier than the idealized accent, and makes it even easier by using special hacks that allow you to sound neutral while still sounding completely natural. This is a big part of my channel and part of why I'm here. Let's take a quick closer look at some of the specific differences between Western American English and the idealized accent that most other teachers teach. 
And note that I am going to try to pronounce the idealized accent version as best as I can, but it is a little unnatural for me, and so it may not be perfect. Or. Or. Oi. Oi. Cot and caught. Caught. Sing. Sing. Ink. Ink. For the ing that's added to verbs, walking. Walking. Hurry. Hurry. Train. Train. Drain. Drain. You can find more information like this, including exercises and extra practice, in the American English Pronunciation and Ear Training course. It's free. I want to know what you think about all this. Is it surprising? Useful? Do you disagree? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching another English Hacks lesson, and I'll see you guys in the next one.